and he calls me a few days later and says, Hey, um, we want to go look at the house. Do you mind if we stay the night there? Because if there's a ghost there, we want to kind of, you know, get a feel for it. Is the house haunted? What's, what's going on with that? Uh, and n- no, <laughs> no, you cannot stay the night there. I get there first, unlock the door and everything. And he calls me and says, Hey, I just want to give you a heads up. My mom's coming with me and she's a witch. And I start laughing. I'm like, um, what? He's like, yeah, she's, she's a witch. Don't worry. She's just going to come to check to see if this, uh, if this ghost is a good ghost or a bad ghost. All right. I'm like, so was... not like a meaty. Yeah, he was seven. I'm like, he was seven. I'm sure he was good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Behind the Lockbox. I'm Stephanie Zalowski. Cam is out again for a few weeks, but she will return today. Okay, wait. How do you say your last name? Matteo. It's so much easier than I thought. We have Josh Matteo with us. (laughs) I forgot to ask you that before we started recording. You know, it happens. Uh, Josh is an agent with Woods Real Estate Services in Mission Hills. He's been in the business for just over five years, and we're actually in a mastermind together, and I know he has some stories for us. I also found out he's a dog dad, just like I'm a dog mom. So Josh, welcome to Behind the Lockbox. What's up? Thank you for having and me. And for everyone on YouTube, we're testing our new uh, microphones today. Um, these are like our travel mics. So we're going to start recording with these from time to time. So I know I'm making you work today and hold the microphone I know, versus like, I know <laughs> we might have to rethink this. We might we might bust out the tripods after this. But anyway, OK, when you walked in, all you said was I was like, how many stories do you have? He's like, I've got a couple. And I was like give me the first one. He's like, you, all you said was I have a witch story. (laughs) We have yet to have a witch story Uh on this podcast. Okay. Tell me everything. Well, if you need a witch, I got a witch. Oh, like legit. She's legit. Was she, okay. Start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. Is she a client? Was it, you know? No. So I was uh, working with this, this couple. Okay. And we'd looked at over 50 houses. Okay. Wrote probably 30 offers or so. Wow. Was Um, this during COVID? During COVID. Yeah. Well, that was what was happening back then. We were in the escrow with them and we were about a day from closing Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they lost their shit and they wanted to back out of escrow. So we backed out. A day before closing. like a day before closing. Okay. For anyone who doesn't know, your deposit at that point has gone hard. Earnest money is is gone. It's non-refundable. Like you won't get it back when you're a day out from closing. Yeah. What, how, how expensive was this house? Like, what are we talking? It was probably about uh, just under 750. Okay. So, but still, I mean, yeah. 3% is, I'm assuming what they put into escrow. Yeah. Oh my God. And okay. So, so yeah, why? Was, what happened? Well, with that one, it was just, <clears throat> they just lost their mind last second. I was like, what's, what's going on guys? And they're like, we just can't, we can't buy it. It looks too much like a mobile home. I'm like, mm, okay, well you're a day from closing. It looked great. The first 29 days we were here. I was going to say, mind you. They've been there multiple, multiple times. times. You've done es- you've done inspections. Like you've been to the house. You obviously this is not a sight unseen situation. No. Okay. Continue. So Keep I mean, crazy. long story short, with that one, we ended up falling out of escrow. <laughs> and he tells me, he says, "Well, if you can get me my earnest money back, that would be awesome." Uh, like, you're a day from closing. I will try, not, but like not I'm not work. God. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, you guys, you know, I'll, I'll ask the other side, and she she just laughed at me. <laughs> and they were legitimately like. They were done. Like they were out. This was it. They they did not want to do this anymore. Right. Wow. So they were upset because the their the house was fourteen fifty square feet, give give or take a little bit. Okay. And after the appraisal come back, he he appraised it at like eighteen fifty. Okay. And so they were upset that they were getting more square footage than what they were expecting. I was like, um, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, I don't know, they just spiraled and lost their mind. Like all of a sudden. So, okay. So they thought they were getting a smaller house. It appraised for more. Were, was that permitted square footage? Like, was it going to count against tax records? Like, would their taxes be it more? It was not permitted. Okay. So it wouldn't necessarily, then their taxes wouldn't go up. They would base it on what was permitted. Right. Exactly. Okay. Like, hello. I know. Blessing. That's what we try to get across to them. And so that was, but kind no. of, that was kind of the start of our downfall with, with this couple. And so we take about a month off or so. Okay. You, we, you officially back out we and officially they're not getting, out. did you have to go? I've never had this happen yet. 
did you have to go into mediation and try to get the deposit back or did you just did they understand that it's gone and like i mean they they understood it was gone richard who's my broker he's mm-hmm. a real estate attorney he okay had a conversation with them okay and was like yeah that's it's, helpful it's not gonna work right like and the you this is this is a classic sh- closed bookcase of like you decided to back out too late you're not getting your deposit back right so okay. that was, yeah, so that was kind of the start of our, I don't want to say downfall, but. Demise. Demise. <laughs> and so we take about a month off and then we come back and, you know, she sends me six houses that they want to see on that, that Saturday. I'm like, great, let's go look at these six houses. Okay. And all of a sudden they want to write an offer on all six houses. All six. All six. And remind you, this <sighs> was during COVID when everything is going way above list price. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to kind of. There was a, I wasn't doing six, but there was at one point for a client, I did write two or three at a time just be for that reason. You know what I mean? Like we wanted to ensure that basically, you know, this was, this was going to work or whatever, you know, that we would get something. Right. And I mean, it's doable, but it's, it's, it's tough because what if, you know, multiple offers get accepted and the whole, whole they got to decide and then you're backing out and like, oh, I'm just kidding. Never mind, which is never a good look on us. I look like an ass. Totally. Anyway, okay, so, you, so did you write all six? So we wrote six offers, <laughs> and then this kind of continues for three or four more weeks where we're looking at four or five houses and writing four or five offers. Oh, my not God. Not getting it. Not getting it. So we finally get one accepted. This is down in National City. Okay. We get this, we get this offer accepted. Super excited. Okay. And I asked him, I said, hey, what, you know, why were we writing all those offers? What, what had happened? They're like, well, you can't tell anyone, but we're pregnant. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's why we backed out of escrow because you guys are pregnant and you started freaking out. Is that why? Well, that's why we they backed out, yeah. And you're like, could you not have communicated this to me? Like we would have I don't know, we could have done something. Could have done something. Okay. So So they finally get one. They finally they're pregnant. Get, so we get one accepted and they're pregnant and we finally we get the disclosures. Mm-hmm. And turns out there was a death on the property within the last three years. Oh boy. So I, I saw it and, you know, so I just called my buddy and said, Hey, you know, I just went through the disclosures. They look good. There was a death on the property. And he's like, Oh, that's not going to be good. I'm like, what do you mean? It's, you know, it was And fine. did they disclose how the person died peacefully? They didn't say. They said peacefully. And that okay. Was okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so I had like, one of those recently. It's like it was a peaceful death. I, you right. Know, who right. knows? Was and, it an older home? Older home, yeah. Probably, okay, so it's probably an older person that passed away in their home. Probably in forties or fifties. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. And so, <laughs> so he's like this. So he he starts getting a little, little squirrely. Squirrely. Yeah, like here we so go. So I again. call the listing agent. You know, I'm like, hey, do you know what's up with this person that passed away? And he's like, oh, it was their son. He was seven. He was sick, and he passed away. I'm like, oh, damn it. Oh no. It was so sad. That is so sad. Yeah. Oh shit. And so you know, I I let him know. And so now they're going down this rabbit hole. And he calls me a few days later, says, hey, um, we want to go look at the house. Do you mind if we stay the night there? Because if there's a ghost there, we want to kind of, you know, get a feel for it. Is the house haunted? What's what's going on with that? Uh, and n- No, <laughs> no, you cannot stay the night there. Right. So I'm like, you want to stay the night? No, that's not an option. We can go there at night. The house is vacant. So we can go sit there for 30 minutes if you want, you know. You went ghost hunting? So we're not staying the night. (laughs) And by the way, I can't leave you at this house by yourself. Like, that's such a massive liability. (laughs) Could you imagine? (laughs) Yes. And that's why it's like when someone's like, oh, can I just like move some of my stuff into the garage early? No, No. Because if the house were to catch on fire or get broken into or something, we're all liable. No, no. Anyway. Just doesn't happen. Not a- no, it's not. No. So I'm like, no, you can't do that. We can go there for a bit if you want to just feel it out. Did anyone live in it? Was it seller owner occupied? It was vacant. So okay. No okay. So you so could go easy- at nine o'clock at night when it's pitch black and sit right. there in the darkness. Which was nice. So it was kind of easy to come and go as we Okay. As we okay. And so, you know, he calls me. He says, well, let's let's go ch- check it out. I'm like, all right, let's 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 do it. I get there first. Unlock the door and everything. And he calls me and says, hey, I just want to give you a heads up. My mom's coming with me and she's a witch. And I started laughing. I'm like, um, what? He's like, yeah, she's, she's a witch. Don't worry. She's just going to come to check to see if this, uh, if this ghost is a good ghost or a bad ghost. All right. I'm like, so seven. not like a media. Yeah, he was seven. I'm like he was seven. I'm sure he was good. 
<laughs> I'm sure he's not haunting the place like crazy. Like I'm sure he's a nice kid. So wait, is she like a self-proclaimed like medium psychic or like, no, no, witch? Witch. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. She's a witch. I wonder what the difference is. And uh, so the three of them come in. Okay. The husband, couple, wife, and mom. Husband, wife, and mom. Okay. And uh, Can you paint me a picture of what she looked like, the mom, the witch? It was a, you know, Hispanic family. Okay. Little, you know, little old lady. Okay. Um, you Did know. she look like a witch? She had long gray hair, big nose, no, she, warts? No, she, okay. No, she didn't have the warts. She didn't have a Green lot, face? No. no, it no. wasn't. Okay, got like, it. Like walking in the street, you wouldn't picture her being a witch. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but anyways, uh, she, they walk in, they got the candles and everything. Oh, okay. I was going to ask, what did they bring with them? Yeah, so they brought Sage? the Sage? Mm, I don't think there was sage. It was more so the Ouija candles. board? Just can't. Just, Just candles. candles. She knows what she's doing. Just candles. Just the candles. Okay, she's legit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... And this is a Saturday afternoon. We go to the house. Oh, it's not even dark. It's not even dark. Okay. Saturday afternoon. Okay. So I, I did my run club in the morning, was at brunch, and then all of a sudden it's time <laughs> to go to the house. Your your friends are like, where are you going? You're like, I have to go meet a witch at an escrow. I shall return. Don't worry. They're like, uh, maybe. Well, that was, well, the, that was the conversation I returned. I'm but sure. Anyway, yeah. So he's like, all right, it's probably going to take about 30 minutes or so. Okay. so we're just going to determine if it's a good ghost or a bad ghost. Okay. So I go outside in the backyard. I'm sitting on the picnic table, just kind of twirling. Wait, you didn't stand. You didn't stand there and watch. I didn't want to watch. No. What? I could like see through the window. Okay, tell me what you saw through the window. Tell. I need to know details. No, okay. Like what was she much. doing like, through the window? She was just standing there, moving her arm. She's got the candle lit, and she was kind of just taking the candle to each room, and she's able to determine where the child passed, passed. away. Okay. And so they determined which room it was, which was crazy. Which room was it? It was the front bedroom when you first walk in on the right. So likely his room, his own room. Right. Okay. And um, so there I am sitting outside. I'm kind of just like twirling my thumbs for 30 minutes. I'm like, are you serious? I've been working with these clients for months. We've been putting in offer after offer. And, and this, this witch, witch could kill the deal. Could literally kill the deal. Oh my God. So I'm, you know. Just sitting there. Just sitting there. Like, Do they come out and they're like, we're done. And so he came out, my buddy came out, and I'm kind of like <laughs> chuckling. I'm like, so what's... Arms crossed, you're like, <laughs> so what did she find? Tell me everything. <laughs> like, give me all the details. Like, what? Exactly, exactly. And so he's like, well, you know, good news. It, it's a good ghost. I'm like, thank God, okay. Like so I told you, he was seven. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I'm like, what's that mean? Are we, like, are we good to move forward? And he's like, yeah, we're good to move forward. The child passed away in this room. Okay. Like... All right, that's that's good. So I, you know, shake the witch's hand. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for not killing my deal. deal. <laughs> wow. So like, I mean, did he say anything about her communicating with the little boy? No, I didn't really ask those questions. I'm gonna need you to ask questions. I know. I'm gonna need you to ask a lot more questions next. Sounds time. like okay. It, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Messed up. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. So I, you know, so I close close up shop and everything, and then go back to my brunch or whatever at this time it's you know three in the afternoon everybody's still there they're like hello welcome so back they're like Where, where'd you go i'm like oh i had to you know go show that property i have a client who's purchasing that home and um there was a witch and i just needed to make sure everything was okay just That's had all. to make sure that we were good to go so she so then they bought it yes then they bought it do we think are they still living there they're still living there but uh things aren't pretty so what do you mean? Oh my gosh! It, like on top of the witch, this house we walk into it, and it's like kind of on a cliff in national in National City, and uh, there's like some major sloping. Okay. And since it's on a cliff, you can't, and it's on a slab, so you can't get your normal foundation um, guy out there. So okay. you have to get like a foundation engineer, sure, or maybe even a soils person to see. Okay. Something. So, okay. You know. It, get a hold of my guy and he's like well it's gonna be eight hundred dollars for the inspection I'm like, oh, that's a lot. was this after they closed no this, this was before. during this was okay. when we were still doing all the inspections okay 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 and so i i, t I tell my my clients i'm like hey you know he's gonna charge eight hundred dollars and she's like absolutely not we're not charging that i'm like well i'll pay for half of it i think it's very to... important that we do this right right you always want to do all inspections especially especially when you're on a canyon or a hill or whatever the case Especially, may be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we have earthquakes here, like not massive ones, but the ground moves, you the know. ground shakes, mm -hmm. you never know. Mm -hmm. And we're on sand, yeah. so basically built on sand. Anyway. 
And uh, so they just they declined to get that inspection. I'm like, okay, so this well, needs I mean... to be done. And so eventually we close. Okay. And they're trying to remodel it because they want to turn like the upstairs into a separate unit and everything. Oh, wow. Okay. And so they realize that they have to do some work to the slab where it's all slanty, slanty and everything. Okay. So he asked me for the um, engineer's phone number. Sure. Give it to him. I'm in Hawaii at like a football tournament, like trying to enjoy myself. And I get a phone call from of him. Course. I'm like, why is so and so And this is. Me? After you've closed? This is after we've closed. It's okay. Like probably right. a good month or so after okay. we close. closed. You thought you were in the clear. I thought I was in the clear. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And so he gets the engineer out there, gives me a call a few days later. He's like, hey, Josh, uh, I just want to let you know that we had the engineer come out and he quoted us $100,000 to to fix the, the slanted slab. No. I'm like, oh. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. And so when when you did your home inspection, let's talk about this for a second, because for anyone who's not an agent and listens, this is important. When you did your home inspection, did the home inspector find any cracks in the slabs? like, Or were you just kind of preemptively being like, you know, we should do an inspection? Like, was there any signs to you that were concerning? Well, the signs to me were they had just put in new flooring and they just painted the entire thing like crazy and you could okay. just tell you've been in one of those properties where they paint it where the paint kind of covers the cracks but you can still sort of yes. see where the crack yes was. was any of the floor buckling it wasn't buckling but it okay. was like fresh okay okay and so I, i'm telling them like we should get someone out here because look like you can see that this right crack was painted like clearly it was just painted over they didn't like fix the crack they didn't fix it they pa- didn't patch it then paint yeah. it or anything like that because I, um, I have a property that is like lath and plaster. Mm-hmm. And so if you walk improperly in the attic or anytime if we have like an earthquake, they've had it where there's like hairline cracks and they have to right. have a, a, someone special come out, you know, fix the cracks and then they paint over it. And it happens because it was built in the 70s and like, you right. know, it's older, there's right? So that's going to 100%. And you see even drywall gets cracks and like you'll see it on like the tape on the seam line or whatever, right? right? But like you just felt like... You could just tell there was And they just on. refused. Because had they done this inspection in escrow, mm-hmm. you could have gotten a price reduction, a credit, even if they oh. wanted to move forward, like something. We would have definitely gotten something. Because, because, yeah, here's the thing. Once you do that inspection report, as you and I both know, the listing agent will then have to disclose if there is something wrong with that. And they would have been like right. they would have had to either have that completely fixed or go forward with someone who's willing to fix it and take it on. But with a price right. reduction or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we would have went to the sellers and said, uh, this was the quote to fix this. This needs to be. Yeah. Addressed. Repaired or addressed or give no. me a credit or something. Sell. Like it would be a price mm-hmm. reduction at that point. That credit's too big, but. Right. Wow. So then, then what? Well, so like when they, so, so what made them have somebody come out and do it? Did something happen? Well, it was because they were trying to remodel the top floor. Okay. And when they started you know, taking stuff out, they realized the they contractors and everyone started you know. seeing stuff and they're like, this doesn't look right. Like yeah. we need to. So it just started opening a can of worms and it just like spiraled from there. Right, right, right. And so there I am in Hawaii and he calls me. He's like, yeah, you know, we want to try to, you know, sue the <gasps> the sellers or the listing agent or something. He's like, I don't want to get you involved, but I just want to let you know that we're considering doing that. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my God. And on seller disclosures, did anything come up? Nothing came up in the disclosures. Did they talk about freshly painting and new floors? And I'm assuming they did. They, you always yeah, have to disclose what work right. you've done. They'd mention the paint, the but, new flooring. It, but, but to their credit, if they were just like, oh, like we said, things shift all the time. Like there's cracks everywhere. Like if we're just going to paint, we want to make it look nice and we're doing new flooring. You know, they, right. who knows what it looked like before and made their agent might have said, look, we need to do some extras if you want to get some extra out of it. You know, they might have not known. Well, that's the thing is they were, it was a rental before. Oh. And so they just hired this company to come in. To come in and like they didn't do so they, any, yeah. so they you know. So they hadn't walked through the property in years. Right. And also like, oh, so a renter's kid died there. Must have been, yeah. Yeah, because it wasn't mm-hmm. theirs. So again, though, like if they weren't going to be opening can of worms and remodeling, I've had a client where his roof leaked and I, I told him to get a roof inspector because our inspector noted some stuff that was like, in, in the yeah, or he or could something. see old like water lines and he's like, I don't know. The roof is also kind of old. And my guy was like, no, nah, I don't care. I don't care. This place, I'm going to tear it apart. What happened at the next rainstorm two months after we closed escrow? The whole fucking roof leaked oh my into his house. 
And then he was like, I'm going to sue them. And I'm like, no, you're not because you didn't want to do a roof inspection. If it hadn't, look, could they have lied on seller disclosure? Sure. But all they would have had to say is we never saw any leaks or yeah, we didn't know about it. And it's like, he said again, you know, his word against your word. So, oh my God. So then what? Well, they're just going through the process and he's kind of updating me. And then I get a phone call from the listing agent's uh, team lead. He's like, hey, do you know so-and-so? Oh, boy. I was like, yeah, of course. He's like, um, yeah, well, he's my client. yeah, there's a claim against them that, you know, they're trying to get sued. And this was a good buddy of mine who was the team lead. And the listing agent was such a sweet guy, too. He was yeah. super nice. So it's like, oh, my gosh, this sucks. Whatever, you know, whatever's going on. So your on. client definitely, like, left you out of it, but went full bore in trying to sue them. Right. Behind the Lockbox is sponsored by Property Showcase Group. Property Showcase Group has a team of creative, directors, producers, editors, marketing specialists, and designers that work in tandem to tell and share stories of the built environment. Whether you're looking for full service production or simply just in content creation, Property Showcase Group can help take your business to the next level. To learn more or to contact Property Showcase Group to schedule a consultation, you can find them at propertyshowcasegroup.com. That's spelled P-R-O-P-E-R-T-Y-S-H-O-W-C-A-S-E-G-R-O-U-P dot com. Propertyshowcasegroup.com. I'm back to talk about our sponsor and producer, Property Showcase Group. This is for all my agent and affiliate friends out there. Property Showcase Group has a special offer for you. The first three agents to email Property Showcase Group at team. PSG at propertyshowcasegroup.com will get one month free of social media management using code lockbox. That's right, one month free. And they're offering 20% off your first video production using code lockbox. For more information, contact Property Showcase Group at team PSG at propertyshowcasegroup.com and don't forget to use code lockbox or mention this podcast. And it was just, it was just a messy situation. I don't Mm -hmm. think like anything happened Mm because here we are a few years later. Mm -hmm. And you, Uh, and nothing's like come from it basically. I haven't gotten anything. No mail, no nothing. That's good. That's good. I mean, it's very possible that like that brokerage then, I mean, it's why we pay E&O insurance, right? right? Arizona mission assurance insurance for anyone who doesn't know what that is. And it basically protects us. Like as long as we were on the up and up and all of our documentation is correct, our brokerages will back us and we have attorneys in that way that can say, no, you know, X, Y, and Z happened. You're not at fault, whatever. So I'm sure that that's what yeah. happened is they right. looked at everything, the insurance. Yeah. kicked in, and they basically told your client, like, they're not at fault. This is on you. You right. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because did you have anything in writing? Well, they never asked you, I guess, right? Well, so we, what, what we had in writing was they'd originally decided they were going to do the um, foundation engineer mm-hmm. guy come out mm-hmm. and so we had documentation that he sent over saying hey i'll be there monday at this mm-hmm. time and then they canceled then it they when canceled they saw it. how much it was going to cost right so we have the documentation saying that my clients canceled it so that attorney was probably very much or whoever was involved was like this is on you dude yeah. like you canceled this you should have done this inspection like that's part of your due diligence period so right. have you talked to these clients yeah but every time it's just like so energy suck the energy is just mm-hmm. so weird because he's such a nice guy and he mm-hmm. like we still do like we still play in the football league together and he's oh like, you see him in football so I see okay him he, like he okay is a good person and i of course like, i still talk to him and everything right but it's always just like weird well, and it's awkward because it's like again i always internalize that kind of stuff like mm-hmm. i should have done more i right. should have forced them but we can't force our clients to do these inspections and you you feel so bad because then you sold them something and like you're always going to kind of think like oh are they going to blame me or whatever you know what i mean it doesn't sound like he is especially when he was like no i'm leaving you out of it but it sucks it's not something that we want like you said you still internalize it you do gosh what could i have done what could i have done differently what Mm -hmm. not the answer i'm telling you is nothing like it's nothing i'm five years ahead of you and it's there's nothing you could have done (laughs) there's nothing you could have done and again this kind of stuff happens and for everyone out there, again, please do all your inspections. Like, do them, do them all, even if you think it's not needed. And I know it sucks when, like, you know, like these guys, especially when they already lost a deposit. I mean, they kind of, yeah. they canceled this one, lost their deposit, wouldn't do this. I mean, they keep costing themselves all this money. Yeah. Like, that's insane. Right. And that's I, insane. You know, I think it was a lot of it was just, you know, the pregnancy and all the emotions up and down. Sure. Which it happens, but like, 
you've got to do your inspections because do the inspections. I've had clients again, especially during COVID when we were like trying to find multiple properties or whatever. And we would do inspections. They do like roof. I mean, non-negotiables for me are home inspector first. And the sewer scope at Sewer least. scope at least. And it, again, if it's, it depends, but like I pretty much recommend it 20, mm -hmm. like regardless, like right. if it's a, if it's a single family home, you're getting a sewer scope. Absolutely. And sometimes roof depending on what our home inspector says right. how old he thinks the roof is if it's looking great and they don't want to do it then fine if he doesn't find any moisture then we're probably okay right and then again <clears throat> but if he i always have home inspector first because then he'll kind of guide us right as to what he thinks he needs hey i found some cracks in the foundation this right. looks a pencil can fit through it that's a bad sign you guys right. need to get a foundation person over that, here. you know this wood looks a little rot i oh thank you termites guy. another one that i pretty much always do always. as well it's yeah. usually home sewer termite or non-negotiables non at, at least and then could be roof could be foundation could be a soils engineer could right. be whatever you know what i mean so yeah it's oh my god so that was a mess but you know what we got through it you got through it i yeah. mean so have they done the repairs they did the repairs they've re did all of that and they like basically you know fixed up that second story or whatever mm -hmm. made it whatever they wanted yeah. okay well I hope from what i hear that's what, that's what he's told me i haven't okay. seen it you're like, I can't bring myself <laughs> to go back over to that house. Like, I can't do it. I oh, know. my God, and I, Josh. And I like to celebrate my clients when they, uh, and then like their house anniversary. Yeah, same. And so it pops up on my calendar every year. And yeah. I, I don't have it in me <laughs> to be like, congratulations. Congratulations on not ever listening to anything I tell you to do and it costing you another hundred grand. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. That's Still too bad. Them, but holy cow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When we were standing here, let's see. Let's do a time check because, okay, we have a little bit of time. Do you have a quick story? You what, Quick story. What, what yeah. else were you saying? And then we'll play a game, but you said you had one other one. So I had this, uh, I refer to them as clients from hell. Oh, no. And so, and I it started Witchy off. Poo and her family weren't clients from hell, but these guys, <laughs> I mean, it happens. It happens. It happens. And, you know, any first time home buyers, you know, they go through the emotions. I try to. Yes tell them initially like hey we're gonna go Try through to all the emotions it. yes i'm yes. your guy if you need anything give me a you know yep a call you know i'll get you through it get you through it yes yeah and so the first conversation is just on the phone with these guys they're a referral from my lender okay and uh i get to the house a little bit early and i'm trying to open the the front door and of course the lock is broke oh, God. and so I'm like well maybe the back door uh will work it's tell me to raise your hand if you've ever had to break into a property <laughs> me like yeah uh-huh uh-huh yeah, so i've not times. yet crawled through a dog door but like you know if i could fit i might do that anyway i had, I had a client do that i mean if they're small enough yeah. and you're like go go get in there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um so anyways the, i'm in the process of jumping the fence and it's like a 10 foot chain length fence <laughs> well at least it was chain link get your right. feet in there and able to like you right. know not scale like a brick wall okay right. so there i am i'm like at the top i guess like riding it like a pony or whatever <laughs> And they and they walk up. Oh, I'm, I'm like, that you're like straddling the fence. You're like, oh, uh, hello. Like, hey guys, I'm your I'm your realtor. I swear this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> the front door just isn't working. Oh my god. So, Have you seen bridesmaids? Yes. Love you know bridesmaids. when she's straddling the gate and it opens when she's leaving his house and the maid's like looking up at her. That was you. That's what it was. <laughs> Oh We're going to put that on the YouTube when we tell this, and it'll <laughs> oh just be the, the scene of her like straddling the fence. Oh my God. Ridiculous. Okay. So, so that's how we met. And I'm like, <laughs> not the best impression. But like, also kind of funny. funny like, yeah. if they're, you know, have any sense of humor, they'd be like, hell no, yeah, we, he's, he'll do anything to get us in these houses. Like, this is great. Okay. Yeah, we got a good laugh from it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. But then I have a feeling things went awry. So, yeah, quick story. So, <sighs> kind of long story short. So, working with these guys for a few months. Okay. Um, younger couple, probably in their mid 20s. Okay. Um, he's getting uh, money from his dad, who owns an oil company down in Texas. So, oh, they're wow. doing an all cash. Wow. All cash down. Damn. Um, I like me some of that oil. And this was, right. And this was in the heart, uh, the heat of COVID again. <laughs> okay. Where things are just going quick and yeah. way above. Yeah. Which worked in our favor with all cash and we were kind of flexible. 100%. Um, so we'd gotten two offers accepted throughout the process and he would get upset about the littlest thing. He'd like, I want the seller to fix the doorknob. And they're like, no, just do it. You know, we'll do it later. I've had um, those. Another one was foundation there was like a foundation thing and the sellers were like i'll give you the credit like the quotes twenty thousand dollars oh I'll wow give you the twenty thousand okay. dollars and all of a sudden he's like no i want more 
like the quote the is for is 20 this. grand we're not right. going to give you more for what okay and so with those clients well him especially he started calling me text me two three in the morning just all of a sudden had what zero, had zero boundaries and two or three in the morning oh it was crazy like he woke up and started thinking things and he thought it was appropriate a text is inappropriate enough, but I can see it. But a phone call? Yeah, not a phone call. Yeah, I answered the one night because I thought like maybe they needed help or something. Or the right? a house is on fire and they drove by or like who, who the hell knows? You're like, hello? Who knows? And so I'm like, what's what's up? And he's like, well, I just drove by the house. You know, we just couldn't sleep and we were in the neighborhood. So we drove by the house. Oh, good God. And they still have the for sale sign in the front yard. Can you make the listing agent take that down? <laughs> and like no that's, that is not uh, why he called you that is not do not that is no i are yeah. you kidding me i swear yeah you can even ask mike my partner where, what did he say was he like who the hell are you talking yeah. to and what he's like the fire them they need to be fired immediately <laughs> there's still a first at the, i would have been like uh-huh yeah i'll yeah. take care of that first thing tomorrow morning right. like, what yeah not not two three in the morning let's ridiculous boundaries people boundaries so then okay so now have you gotten through the request, request for repair at that point is that why they were wanting the first it like no we still were going through this was a different property so there was, you're like we haven't even bought it yet so you know the sales sign is staying like the, the, yeah it'll show pending maybe on the writer like okay right. it's fine oh it's okay God. that it's in the front yard <laughs> The offer is accepted. They can't accept any other offers. They're like, no, that sign put a hole in our yard and we're going to need another 10 grand to fill that hole. Just the worst. Wow. And it just kept going. And it just kept going. And then the, finally, I would just tell them, you know, after six o'clock, I'm kind of, you know, trying to spend time with, you know, yeah, my live people. your life. Yeah. yeah. So there was, uh, we were going to a Red Hot Chili's Pepper concert. And I told them, I said, I'm going to this concert. I'm not going to be available after 6.30. Right, right. I can chat with so, you tomorrow. Yeah. Right. So there I am. He's texting me, texting me, calling me, calling me, texting me. The sign's still up. The sign's still up. About the sign. About the sign. He's not about anything it. else more important. Lost it. Are they young? Young. Yeah, they're in their mid-20s. Oh, my so God. I don't know who told them that it's, you know, normal to take the sign down, but it's not normal to no, take the sign down. No, it's not. The sign will stay up until the house is sold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus. So, yeah, we fell out of escrow on that one. And luckily, it was a very mutual part ways. Part so, ways. you didn't actually close anything. So, with we them. didn't close anything. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah. I mean, we did an episode a couple weeks ago where I had some people like write in and tell us, like, what's something. Oh my God, I just noticed your socks and they're so my cute. Are they little the wiener dogs? <laughs> oh my God, they're adorable. Anyone on YouTube can see that. Um, we we did this. We had people write in and basically say like, you know, what are things you would change early on in your career? And people said setting boundaries. So good for you because it's important. We are not going to be the agent or the broker for everybody and vice versa. Yeah. And I usually, I don't know about you, but like I'll meet with clients like first time buyers at a coffee shop or at my office and we go through like the buyer guide or what to expect right. or whatever. Right. And you kind of go through all these things with them. And then you get a feel for them because that first meeting, you know, if they start asking all these crazy questions over and over, you know, you can kind of get a feel for someone, right? right? And then seeing property together is kind of the next step. Like it is dating. It's a little tough now with all the NAR stuff because like people have to sign, you know, these agreements with us, but they're only good for three months and they can right. be canceled at any time. But I think that it's going to really make us more efficient and it's going to make people waste our time less you know I what i mean so. that's i think mm -hmm. that's a good thing that came out of that 100 percent. it's like, like it's like the peed days again mm -hmm. i loved that peed <laughs> i hated filling it out but i loved it i had nine new i had a new development in university city nine new homes i would get cold i had a google number set up for that so that people randoms mm -hmm. constantly weren't like right. calling my cell phone right even though my cell phone number is everywhere still and I remember one day it was, I got a phone call from this girl and she sounded very young, very young. And she was like, oh, I want to go see like whatever, Renal Way. And I was like, okay, like, well, in order to do that with COVID, we have to, I have to send you this form. You know, I also need proof of funds and pre-approval letter. And she's like, oh, um, well, we just like wanted to see it because we couldn't do open houses at that point, remember? And I had had a sales office there. So I was doing open houses every weekend. And then that all came to a halt once COVID was well underway. And she was like, oh, actually, I just like, I'm, I just like, I just wanted to see like the furniture and like, right. and I was like, yeah, no, sorry. And I was like, I, there, I can't show it to you without a pre, like, had I, had that not been in place, 
we always kind of thought like, what if? Like you can't judge a book by its cover. You don't know how much money people have. You don't know until you meet them. She would have wasted my time that afternoon. You know how pissed I would have been? And so it's just like it is, I think we're in a better space with that. And I think it's important for us to set those boundaries, know when we need to part ways with a client. Again, it's not always going to be the best fit and that's okay. But we are also not doormats. And we talk about that a lot on this podcast. I don't know when this started and I don't know when it became that like, okay, peasants, like whoever buys, gets me the first house. It's like, first of all, yeah. you know, you don't treat a doctor that way. You don't treat an attorney that way. And my God, if we could bill our hours like that an attorney does, do you know how rich we would be? I would own like a beachfront house already. Oh, absolutely. For every email I send, for every phone call I make, I'd be rolling in the dough. Yeah, so be thankful realize. out there. They yeah. have no idea. And I think- some of the reality shows are showing some of that, the good ones, the good ones. And I think that this podcast is part of the reason why we started it because I wanted people to see the funny, of course, the right. self de- the self-deprecating things and us making fun of each other and like us connecting and like just lamenting about the business, right? But at the same time, what we do, we love and we take very seriously and it's not okay when our time is wasted. It's not okay when people don't take us seriously and constantly come after our commissions. I mean, this has come up recently especially with the reality shows people they see their commission across the screen yeah. by the way that is not what they take home not even close. <laughs> not even close there are so many people we pay out we pay out our brokerage you know depending on what brokerage you're at some are at a cap and then you're not paying them and it just mm-hmm. depends right but then you have tc fees you have assistant fees you have an agent split that you're with or whatever the case may be and so even a forty thousand dollar commission whittle that down to what right well 25 tax, tax and then taxes yeah. 35 percent yeah, is that really number, what that you're saying. Remember, you see on the screen. That's yeah. That's pre-tax. That's pre-tax, and that's pre giving anything. anything to the house. Like, you know, on million dollar listing, like they are with like Douglas Elliman or whoever, and so even the big agents, like here at Compass or whatever, we're at a ninety percent split. Mm-hmm. But you ten percent goes to the house, or ninety two percent. Okay, so then eight percent goes to the house, but you still have a seven percent franchise fee. Right. Sotheby's is that way. Berkshire Hathaway is that way. So you're really not you know it's like 15 16 17 18 19 20 percent is going on my immediately to the brokerage depending on what right. kind of split you have then you have a tc fee then you have taxes right. and then if you have an assistant or anyone else that you're paying so sure on these higher dollar deals that we're doing okay but the first time home buyers our bread and butter deals we're lucky yeah. if we're walking away with seven or eight grand right that's nothing I'm like okay one month's mortgage if that exactly and And if you're not closing multiple deals a month, it ain't pretty. No. No. So it's just, it's something again to say that like, we love our job and we love our clients. But when it becomes that, if my stomach hurts when the phone rings, it's out. I'm done. You know, I've had to block clients before. I've had to, you know, I got through the deal and we closed it, but I was done. I was done because they were so nasty. And it's just like, I don't even, I don't talk to any humans like that. You know, right? It's ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. So anyway. (laughs) Okay, on that serious note, you want to play a game? Let's do it. Okay. All right. So I know you've seen this before, but it's called punch list. So we're going to hit you with three questions. So yeah. just the first things that like come to your mind. Okay. The first one is what's your biggest hot take in the industry right now? And a hot take is basically an opinion that is provocative or goes against mainstream views. So like, again, something if you were like, everyone does open houses, you're like, they don't work. I don't do them. I know you don't because of football so much, mm-hmm. but like, is there any hot take that like, you think agents are doing that you highly disagree with that like people would be like oh okay can you think of anything yes <gasps> well i don't know I'm okay sure i can um all right let's see put me in the spot on this one i know we can come back to it if we need to let's come back to okay it. think about that while you can okay i was i was gonna ask you this one but i'm not going to because i think witchy is the one that maybe almost killed your deal but you got through it so we'll we'll do another one what is the weirdest thing or situation you've ever walked in on Like real estate related or just in general? You know, people ask me that all the time when I ask this question, and it can be anything. Do you have one for real estate? No, not really real estate. That's good. My previous previous career, um, I worked at a maximum security juvenile center. Oh, and I really don't know you. I mean, I think we need to dive into this in another episode. I mean, this can be a whole other Ah. episode. This is just... Insane You've stars. lived a couple of lives already. Oh my god! Ew! What? It, um. And so, what did you walk into? So it was a juvenile. Well, I'll start with like the first one that freaked me out. So these kids are between eleven and seventeen years old. Okay. And I'm like, 
a month in. I just graduated college. And you're like basically a... Um... So I was like a youth development worker. So I was in charge of... Running. Okay, so you're not like security and like... No. Okay, okay. I was running like therapy classes, anger management, substance abuse. Oh, that's really you name cool. It. That and really so, prepared you for this career as an unlicensed therapist you know, because that's patience. what we are. Uh-huh, you exactly. I still don't have patience. Teach me that virtue. <laughs> okay, so you. So what did you find? And so... These kids, you know, if they say, like, I'm going to kill myself, they get put oh, on gosh. suicide watch. And it, and it happened often. I'm sure. And it was such a pain in the ass because anytime they would say it, you'd have to, they'd be put, they'd be on lockdown for 72 hours. And so they'd be in their cell. And it's just probably a cry for attention and help at that point. It's not really like they were going to, mm-hmm. most people, not to go dark, but most people who are going to do it, do it. Yeah. And they don't say anything. So, yeah. So then you and have to go through like, all this, this protocol. This is kind of like a dark story, sort of. That's okay. Um, it and happens. so every 10 minutes you have to go lift up the flap, check out. I'm like, hey, are you doing okay? Because they're in basically a padded room, I guess, yeah. basically. Okay. And so I go check on this kid and he's screaming. He's just trying to get anyone's attention, oh screaming, gosh. yelling. You can hear him on the, the microphone. Yeah. And so I go check on him and he had like scratched all up and down his arms, his face. He wiped it all over the wall. Blood. Blood. And I'm like, dude, are you okay? He's like, you know, start screaming at me. Was he and not mentally all? A lot of those kids, they weren't yeah. all there. Yeah. yeah. They had all yeah. sorts of mental disorders. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go get you some help. So I calmly put the flap down. I go sprinting to my supervisor. I'm like, yo. We got a problem. Um, we got a problem. <laughs> and I tell him, he's like, oh, that happens all the time. Don't don't worry too much. He's about like it. desensitized to this kid because he's, it's kind of like people who would cut themselves, which I've never yeah. understood it. I don't know how you do that. But again, you're not all there if you're doing right. those things. Yeah. 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 Oh my so God. That was, yeah. Well, that's a little terrifying. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay. If you walk into something like that in real estate, we need to have different conversations <laughs> and I need to pull you out because, you know, uh, I'm really curious about this question. If you could be anything other than a real estate agent, what would you be and why? Um, If I had unlimited money, mm-hmm. I would probably want to be if I had unlimited money I would want to be like a teacher that's so cool mm. I just then love you wouldn't have to worry about money you know I wouldn't I mean? have to worry like, about money yeah, and I just yeah. really enjoyed working with with teenagers especially where yeah. you still have a conversation with them yes um get through to them maybe make some changes especially ones that might be struggling that's yeah. really cool teacher counselor maybe yeah we really were definitely cut out for this job because, you know, some of the personalities we work with are like teenagers. Yeah. So, you know, there's that. Yeah. Some people are just batshit look crazy. <laughs> it's true. What are we going to do? It's working with the public anyway. I'm so glad you came by. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Oh, wait. Thank- did we think of a hot take? No. Well, like you said, I absolutely hate open houses. Yeah. And, and a lot of people do. Some people do. Some people don't. Some people cold call. Some people don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like a house hits the market. Like in my neighborhood, I'll just walk over. I'll be, you know, shorts and a t-shirt. Yep. And the agent is so cringy. They have commission breath where it's like Ugh. trying so hard to get me as a client. And you're like, sir. Sir. I'm an agent. I'm, I'm an agent. Leave, nice try, leave me though. alone. Yeah. And then I'll like bring my boyfriend in with me. And they. And like they're trying to pounce on him. I'm like, what are you doing? I, the the desperation it doesn't we work. can smell it miles mm-hmm. away yeah and never be attached to the outcome of a deal mm-hmm. like because then your your fiduciary responsibility is to the client and we need to have them in mind at all times and so yeah it's i know yeah. but i'm hoping that the nar stuff will weed out some it'll of weed out some of the crazy yeah okay good okay great yeah. and then we'll just be hanging out and doing all the deals that's right i love it thank you so much for being here thank you all thank right. you this was fun it was it was super fun it's 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 a great time it's just chatting you know just in chatting. my living room and you got to test out the new mics so They're a little heavy. A little heavy. I know. Steph said, oh, it's fine. Just just suck on it. Just suck on the mic. I want you to suck on the mic. Cam normally does a slurping sound, but I can't do it. So anyway, she's so gross. We love you, Cam. We miss you. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to like, review, rate, share, subscribe, all the things. Follow, download. We need your downloads, please. Yes, yes, yes. So, all right. Thank you so much for being here. All right, yep, all right guys. You. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening. Behind the Lockbox is produced and edited by Property Showcase Group. If you like this podcast, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or review this podcast. Thanks for your support. See you next week.